Greetings, Diocese of Texas. In my second year as your suffragan bishop, I am grateful for this chance to reflect on ministry in 2020. In our few minutes, I'd like to celebrate how I saw God moving and you responding to the Spirit's leading, particularly in the West region, through our common work. Disruption characterized 2020. However, disruption did not define our ministry. Instead, challenges became opportunities for you of our congregations and institutions to reveal your commitment to serve God and to serve your neighbors. Creativity and passion, therefore, rather than chaos, hope and perseverance rather than despair, generosity and compassion rather than isolation are the markers of this past year's journey. You determined with your bishops, medical advisors and each other, how to worship effectively and safely, cleaning protocols, gathering practices, Zoom services, coffee hours, Bible studies and meetings, remote teaching and learning. You adapted and readapted your service to Christ and Christ's church to this unexpected new context. Some previously focused on youth, music or newcomers or any of a number of ministries quickly studied how to stream live manage sound and cameras, and incorporate worship leaders from multiple venues. You did this not because you yearned to become internet broadcasters, but because you wanted to equip the church for the worship of God. Others learned how to be greeters and ushers for online services, modeling a warm welcome through the chat box. You consulted with and supported your colleagues in other parishes and institutions, honoring one another as you each decided how to move forward. You adopted and adapted the discipline of the daily office, seeking God's help, supporting one another in a life of prayer and making public witness to your faith in Jesus Christ. You prayed for the relief of the sick, the protection of healthcare workers, the advancement of racial justice, and for a peaceful and fair election. Every week, as I read your e-newsletters, talked to rectors, vicars, deans, headmasters, and executive directors, met with vestries and boards, I encountered the people of God responding to the God they know in Christ. And you did not forget the least of these, Christ's beloved ones. You gathered food and supplies and gave money for those plunged into food insecurity. You provided takeout meals when you couldn't open your parish halls. You worked with new partners to address rapidly expanding and changing needs to make sure seniors and school children and immigrants did not go hungry. You weighed risks and ensured the hungry were fed and the vulnerable protected. You contributed to provide mental health services to college students and young adults. You found ways to open as polling locations to welcome AA groups, to support those protesting injustice, to advocate for those in danger of eviction. You modified practices in our schools and daycares protect teachers and students, to support parents, and to nurture learners of all ages. Despite the challenges of gathering and serving in person, you spoke up and gave and served with generosity. In so doing, you demonstrated your devotion to Jesus and bore witness to Christ's love in the world. Finally, you remember the future toward which God calls us. You planted a new Spanish-speaking church in Waco. You initiated cooperative ministry with a new missioner in the Central Convocation. You found land on which to build churches and funded and finished capital improvement projects. 
you used your medical expertise to help clergy and directors craft contingency plans. You studied topics that led to uncomfortable conversations and conversion around anti-racism and racial justice. You volunteered for discernment groups to raise up laborers for God's harvest. You stepped forward yourselves saying, here am I, send me. In all, you listened and studied and taught and decided, even when the venue was awkward and the internet unstable, so that the mission of the church to share in the reconciling work of Christ might move forward. Despite the challenges of this year, I have never been more grateful to serve Jesus's mission with you in the Diocese of Texas, with my fellow bishops, with the clergy, and with all of you lay people. Tim joins me in sending greetings to all of you and in saying thank you for your partnership in ministry in 2020. We eagerly wait for the days in which we can pray and sing, serve and celebrate, welcoming you into our home here in Austin, truly and in the flesh together. Until then, let us move forward with hope and joy. Thank you.